Misfits <laughs> on vinyl, 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 vinyl. Two best friends shooting the about, about their, their favorite, favorite titles. Spencer and Aaron and Sam, Sam the Tech Man. It's Misfits on vinyl for me. All right, so that song. <laughs> <laughs> That's our theme song. That's our theme song. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's originally performed by the Vitos. They're a band out of Vancouver. And they are a fan of the podcast, and they surprised us by sending us that theme song one day, which uh, we were very thankful for. Yep. Uh, so uh, welcome to Misfits on Vinyl. Uh, my name is Spencer Stryker. I'm an actor, comedian, and one of your hosts. Uh, my name is Aaron Walsh. I am also one of your hosts. Aaron is also an actor, but so, he's quite shy about it. Yeah, I'm uh, self-conscious about my credits uh, yeah let's put it that way even though he is john snow globe i am john snow globe in the the upcoming in the upcoming yeah. sequel series yeah i actually met john snow today that's his, true we did his name was his name was donnie so he was going by don snow and it's quite and good unfortunately don snow did not want to come to the show yeah, tonight snow so blew us off for parking we, you know what he knows nothing of what we we're gonna <laughs> talk about <laughs> um, i guess just a little bit about our podcast before we get started um for anybody that doesn't listen to us, which I'm sure there's some of you here. Uh, <laughs> we we review albums every week. We kind of just chit chat about our lives, about the album itself, about the time period it was released, some of the little interesting facts and funny stories attached to the artist, attached to the album itself. Um, yeah, we've been doing it now since September. It's been a lot of fun. You can look through our back catalog. It's basically anywhere you find podcasts, YouTube, Spotify. And, and basically any type of music as well. We yeah. should also clarify that. We have covered a lot mm -hmm. in those 30 episodes so yep. far. We've covered hip-hop. Yes. Country. Yes. Alt-rock. Yes. Pop. Yes. 70s rock. <laughs> yes. Folk. <laughs> yes. Alternative country. Yes. Reggae. No, jazz, not yet. <laughs> jazz. We, we have covered jazz. jazz. We did do jazz. We've done yeah. a couple of jazz albums. Yes, yes. We have. We did one. We did one. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? That one album was so good. I yeah. counted as multiple. And today, I guess, we'll be going into a new genre of yeah. video game soundtrack. We're breaking into yeah. the world of video games. Woo. Woo. Hold your applause, please. Hold your applause, please. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, so this episode of Misfits on Vinyl, we decided that we were going to go into a deep dive into the music of video games, and specifically the soundtrack to the 1998 hit Banjo-Kazooie. Which <laughs> Does anybody know who the composer of Banjo-Kazooie was? Grant Kirka, yeah, wow! Grant Kirka, <laughs> wow! <laughs> what a roaring! <laughs> Way in the back there, thank you! Oh, man. <laughs> I, uh, okay, so, I'm going to get into the about the game here yes. off the top. So, uh, Banjo-Kazooie was a platformer, if you do not know. Mm -hmm. uh, it was released, it was developed by Rare, and it was published on the N64 in 1998. Uh, Rare conceived Banjo-Kazooie as originally a role-playing game called Dream for the Super Nintendo, but then they realized it was really complex to make a role-playing game. Yeah. And they gave up. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> that was... <laughs> they, they, they were... They, they, literally, it says the 15-member team mm. got into development, realized how difficult it would be yeah. to incorporate all of these different elements... And so they were like, let's just scrap this. So I see some parallels from that between me and you. We both wanted to be successful actors, and now we uh, gave up on our dream and do a podcast <laughs> together. So it actually, I, feel, I see the parallels there quite a bit. Yeah, honestly, there's a reason I connected with this yeah. so much. Um, <laughs> uh, so the, uh, the music of the game uh, was composed by Grant Kirkhope, yes. and this was the first game to include vertical mixing. So what that means is whenever the character moves into different areas in the map, the score will change accordingly. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, on Mumbo's Mountain, which I just replayed last night, nice. uh, it was so fun replaying Banjo-Kazooie and just <laughs> feeling like a child again. Uh, but I was, I was replaying it, and like when, you, when you're uh, at the start of the map, it sounds different as than when you go into like the anthill. It has more of a, a, a faster, pacier yeah. sound to it. There's uh, the, the monkey throwing oranges at you. <laughs> uh, that also has a different soundtrack. Nice. But it's all the same uh, composition, just used with different instruments. Oh, cool. So it's really cool because as you move around, it'll change. Um, Banjo-Kazooie sold over 3 million copies, making it one of the best-selling Nintendo 64 games. Nice. Uh, it received acclaim from critics uh, who said that it surpassed Super Mario 64 in terms of platformers. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's interesting. I think that that's true. 
<laughs> I uh, fact. <laughs> I played this on the Xbox, so I was a little later to banjo. This was the very first video game I ever played. Really? Yes. I, I have I have fond memories of my dad trying to win my love in their divorce <laughs> by <laughs> purchasing me a Nintendo sixty four <laughs> and Banjo Kazooie. Did it work? No. Okay. Um, good. <laughs> good, good to know. <laughs> Turns out you have to do more than buy uh, people's love. Oh, like actually love them. Like actually yeah, love them. Oh, okay. Um, good to know. <laughs> uh, so one of the things that was impressive about this game is it won two awards from the Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences. It won Console Game of the Year and Outstanding Achievement in Arts and Graphics. Nice. Uh, it was actually modeled after uh, Walt Disney graphic or like character designs, which is kind of interesting. And when you look at it, it makes sense. Yeah. And then they totally threw that on its head for Conker's Bad Fur Day. <laughs> <laughs> um, as part of Rare's late 90s strategy of rewarding staff bonus royalties, uh, the Banjo-Kazooie staff was paid 50 cents per sold game in addition to their average salaries which was higher than the 17 cent per cartridge amount of 007. Wow, that's, now, that's pretty wicked, actually. What's, what's crazy about this is I did the math on it, and that mm. means that each person, just from when it was on the uh, N64, the royalties were 1.5 million. Wow. Which is insane. <laughs> that's really That's nice. far better than most of the artists that we've covered on the podcast. Yeah, I mean, I'm just fighting for benefits at my work. <laughs> Holy cow, you get 50, 50 cents a cartridge. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I wish that I got that for anything. <laughs> yeah, I know. Holy. Um, okay, so music and sound effects, like I said, they were done by Grant Kirkhope. Mm -hmm. uh, he had previously uh, converted David Weiss's score for Diddy Kong's Quest to the Game Boy. That was his first job with Rare. Nice. And then he helped on 007 Goldeneye, uh, which is, uh, again, another amazing. Rare really was the game mm -hmm. designer of the 90s. Um, he conceived Banjo's musical style after listening to Danny Elfman's score for Beetlejuice. Nice. Uh, he explained that I realized you can use really dark chords with dark harmonies and as long as the rhythm's quite comical, it's not going to scare the kids. It's good to know. I see if I ever score a video game, I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, I'm not going to try and frighten children. No. <laughs> that's usually a goal to roll when you're making art. I think that's a goal in life. Don't, yeah. don't scare kids. Uh, okay, so uh, Banjo-Kazooie is significant for its introduction of vertical remixing, like I, like I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. um, but this came from Miles commanding Kirkhope to get a step beyond early 1990s LucasArts iMuse, which faded between themes instead of sound layers. Uh, animal sound effects were also occasionally instrumental in this game. Yeah, I, the frogs I remember quite yep. distinctly from playing this growing up <laughs> in the in the lagoon. And, and the, the, the jiggies as well. Mm -hmm. They have like a harp sound to them, which is mm -hmm. interesting. Uh, after Dream was disbanded, Rare focused on getting Banjo-Kazooie finished as quick as possible. And one way was to reject Dream's pre-recorded speech and have the dialogue pre presented in text. But... If you've played Banjo-Kazooie, you know that that just means that they were like, let's have text, but they did another layer to it, and they had every character mumble <laughs> in a different voice, which is pretty great. Yeah. Can you do any of the mumbles? No, not really. You can? can? You? I, can you? I think I can probably let's do hear Kazooie. Let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the wow, that's actually <laughs> yeah. Gratilda. That's not, that was not Kazooie. <laughs> the, feedback. <laughs> the feedback is lovely. <laughs> yeah, I, I watched the levels peak there. Uh, <laughs> Sorry for your ears, everyone. Um, okay, so uh, in 2021, uh, Grant Kirkhope re-released Banjo-Kazooie as rejiggied, mm -hmm. uh, and it was basically taking all of the original score and making it this insane orchestrated masterpiece. It was actually, it was funny, I was rushing to get here this morning, and it was like good rushing out of the house music. I was like, <laughs> oh crap, I gotta grab this, I gotta grab this, gotta get this, gotta get to the train. It was quite good. Exactly. I was sitting on the train, and there was like you know, a drunk guy next to me, and I was just vibing to the it, like, it was perfect, actually. You're, you're listening to Spiral Mountain while someone is spiraling out of control. <laughs> Correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, so now we're going to talk about Grant Kirkhope. So yes. Grant Kirkhope was born in Edinburgh, Scotland on July 10th, 1962. Mm -hmm. His mother worked as a music hall dancer, and his father was an avid music fan, exposing him to early influences such as Frank Sinatra and Glenn Miller. Do you know who Glenn Miller is? I do not. I do not either. <laughs> and good. I feel kind of dumb because I remember thinking, I should Google that before yeah. we do the podcast. <laughs> That's okay. Let's pretend we... Well, 
bring it back. Glenn okay. Miller was a country singer. <laughs> yeah, okay, Glenn that's, Miller. That's what we're going with now. Yeah, does anybody else know who Glenn Miller is? Uh, any any <laughs> Glenn Miller fans in the house? I, uh, no? Okay. Uh, uh, dang. So, <laughs> so Grant Kirkhope taught himself to play the guitar at age 11 and is mm. classically trained in the trumpet. Mm. You know who else is trained in the trumpet? Who? Chet Baker yes. from our episode 10 of Misfits on Vinyl. Yes. For some reason, the most popular episode of our podcast mm-hmm. is the jazz episode. There we go. Which is interesting. Uh, okay, so he was brought up in uh, Narrowsboro, North Yorkshire from the age of five and attended King James School. And then he attended the Royal Northern College of Music, which was a prestigious school. And uh, it basically all of the London Symphony Orchestra goes to that school. Hmm. Uh, Kirko played in various bands after leaving the school, including Zoot and the Roots, <laughs> along with name. the saxophonist <laughs> Snake Davis. <laughs> That's which two good names, that actually. is a fantastic yeah, name. Snake Davis. <laughs> I already know Zoot's what his roots. songs sound like just from his name. That's. Mm. That's pretty amazing. Uh, so Kirkhope also spent many years as part of the Big Bad Horns, which were mm-hmm. a part of uh, which were a part of the UK band Little Angels. Um, so they contributed to the Little Angels recordings and toured with them, but they remained a separate entity. Okay, they did not. So the Big uh, the Big uh, Bad Horns was their own. They were basically their own band, but they never released anything of their own. Mm. Everything was with the Little Angels. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, it was it was very odd. Uh, Little Angels were successful in the UK with four best-selling albums, including a number one in the UK album charts with Jam in 1993. Uh, <laughs> I'm plus, not, I'm not familiar with them either. Eleven hit singles. How are you not familiar with okay. Little Angels? <laughs> okay, name some of the singles. Sing one to me. <laughs> Little Angels. <laughs> We're here to sing mm. a song, mm. little angels. <laughs> we hope you sing along. Mm. That's like what their number one hit. Really? Yeah, I no. think so. <laughs> um, they toured with Van Halen, <laughs> and at the end of their okay, UK cool. tour, Van Halen gave the band their entire backline for free. Okay, that's really cool. right. <laughs> and then. Little Angels split in 1995. Oh, no. <laughs> so they get all of this amazing touring equipment, mm. and they're like, we're never going to use <laughs> we're this. We're never going to tour again. Okay. Uh, nice. So in 1995, Kirk Hope joins uh, Rare Games mm-hmm. uh, in October. And at this time, he was playing in two bands. And I actually have to focus on saying these separately because it sounds like one band. Okay, I'm ready. Sire, mm-hmm. which is spelled S-Y-A-R, mm-hmm. uh, and main acts. Maniacs. <laughs> Maniacs. 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 There's nice. an extra E in there. Nice. <laughs> Which I thought it was Sire and Maniacs, and I yeah. thought that would be cool. Those are uh, not as good as the other names. No, we they just aren't. Zoot and the Roots is pretty cool. Zoot and the Roots is the best Snakey band Davis. Name of all time. Yeah. No one can toot out a horn like Snakey. <laughs> Snakey uh, Davis. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> uh, so while he was in the uh, Maniacs, uh, mm-hmm. his fellow bandmate was another rare composer named Robin Beanland. Robin went on to win a BAFTA in wow. 2001 for the uh, composition of Conker's Bad Fur Day. Oh, that's cool. Right? Uh, so immediately he began working on the score for uh, 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 Diddy Conquest, like I said, mm-hmm. and Goldeneye, and then he worked on Blast Corpse. Uh, so then after that, he starts working on Banjo-Kazooie, gets like full reign. It's his first project where it's just him. Works on Banjo-Tooie, same thing. Mm-hmm. Perfect Dark, same thing. And while he's at the company, he starts moving up. And then in 2007, he does the score for Viva Pinata. Mm. Uh, remember that game on the Xbox 360? Yes, I do. Yeah, it came for free with a lot of Xboxes. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was nominated for a BAFTA in the original score category for that, <laughs> which See, is crazy. I think that's his top track on Spotify. Yeah, yeah. it is. And yeah. I didn't realize how popular that game was before. I, <laughs> Neither did I. I had completely written that game off. I know, you just pulled that deep out of my memory yeah. when you said that. I just re- like, and I know the cover. I remember mm-hmm. the cover. It's got a smiling p- pinata, which is kind of creepy. Cause, like, <laughs> like, I totally forgot about that like, like, is the pinata? Like, what happens in that game? Do they beat the pinatas? <laughs> like, I was like, why are the pinatas so happy? This is creepy. <laughs> Uh, so in 2008, he leaves Rare to join big, huge games. Mm. Uh, I don't think they're as big as Rare. Uh, in 2012, he moved his family from sunny old Scotland 
mm-hmm. to gloomy California. Oh, that's fun. And has remained there ever since, becoming a naturalized citizen in 2017. Hmm, very cool. I feel like we need to become naturalized citizens. <laughs> in California? In California. Mm, I don't really have any interest in living in California. But we could live in like one of the cool places. <laughs> like where? Like the... The uh, <laughs> Palm Springs, Fresno, Fresno. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Bakersfield, Baker's. Actually, Bakersfield, we do well there as a music history podcast. Mm. A lot of music history there. Yeah, Buck Owens. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> look at you. Yeah, they're gonna put me in the movies. Anyways, <laughs> uh, Kingdoms of Almar Reckoning was nominated for best score for a video game or interactive media mm-hmm. by the International Film Music Critics Association, uh, and. It was also nominated at the Q Awards for Best Overall Score, Best Video Game Score, and Kirk Hope was nominated for Best Breakout Composer. This is like 20 years into his career. Wow. And he got nominated for Best Breakout Composer. <laughs> that's like sometimes at the Grammys when they're Best New Artist, and it's like somebody that's been around for like eight or nine years. Yeah. It's like, oh, I think you're a little late to the party. I, I think you're late to the party. You just weren't cool enough to know their music. Yeah, you're like three they're three albums in the best breakout <laughs> artist of the year. <laughs> okay, so uh Kirk Hope was nominated in 2015 mm-hmm. for the Composer's Choice Award nice. for his work on Civilization Beyond Earth. Hmm. You played Civilization I've Beyond played, Earth? I've never played Civilization Beyond Earth. I've played Civ before, but never. It's never uh, Beyond Earth. it's it's just as long. Okay. Good yeah. to know. That's uh, good to know. <laughs> and then uh he made the transition into film around this time mm-hmm. too and he won the be- uh, best score at the Silicon Beach Film Festival mm. for the score of the feature film Shadows by Michael Matteo Rossi nice. in 2019. I'm learning so much about award shows and film festivals I've I never know. heard of before. Uh, it's I, incredible. It turns out that's what you do when yeah. you're in the entertainment industry. You just <laughs> win things to get grants, and then you just keep doing that. The old Betty Mitchell Award. The old Betty Mitchell yeah. Award. Uh, the Louis B. Hobson Critics <laughs> Award. Yes. Uh, okay, so the score to the feature from uh, The King's Daughter mm-hmm. won the People's Vote Award at People's Vote Award <laughs> the at the World <laughs> Soundtrack Awards. How many awards are there? Yeah, uh, I feel uh, like, did you even read what you put down? I did. I, I, I just forgot how many awards there are. This is kind of shocking. Um, and it was nominated for uh, score uh, fantasy film at the Hollywood Music and Media Awards in 2022. Nice. Now, biggest Kirk, Grant Kirkhope controversy of all time. Mm, and recently. it's recent. Yeah. He wrote the most famous <laughs> video game sound of all time mm-hmm. with the DK raps. Yeah, the DK Donkey Kong rap. DK. Is great. <laughs> Donkey Kong. DK. Donkey Kong. Kong. And you know what? It's in the Super Mario movie, Mm -hmm. but you know what is not in the Super Mario movie? The credit for Grant Kirkhope in the credits. It says, from DK64 Nintendo Studios. It does not say from composer Grant Mm. Kirkhope. You might as well just take off that Luigi hat over there. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to shame you. Uh, Yeah, I saw that. He posted it on his Instagram story. I think he was actually genuinely hurt by it. He was very sad by it. And everybody in the comments was coming to his defense because that is a big slap in the face. Mm. They, they, They credited everyone else. Like, there was some deep cuts in the Mario verse mm-hmm. that they credited. And you can see it in the picture on his Instagram, too. Yeah. Uh, and all that Grant Kirkhope posted was a crying emoji. Oh. Just one tear. Yeah, that was the best when you were <laughs> playing Melee on the, you play Melee on the GameCube. <laughs> yeah, I used to play the DK rap. Me and my brother would turn up. <laughs> like, eight years old. We'd be so happy. <laughs> Just, like, throwing each other into barrels with that song on. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> I forgot about the DK song. Yeah, yeah that's oh, that's yeah, great. That sounds like something else. Anyways, uh, getting into the track list here. Now, there was 17 tracks on the original soundtrack mm-hmm. uh, when it was released as a CD in 1998. Uh, these included the main title theme, mm-hmm. uh, Spiral Mountain, which I think we all uh, recognize because mm-hmm. it's the one that has the most banjo in it. <laughs> yes. For a game called Banjo-Kazooie, <laughs> there is not enough banjo mm. in the soundtrack. Uh, the Witch's Lair, uh, mm-hmm. which uh, it kind of runs off of the uh, uh, Teddy Bear Picnic song, yes, uh, but with a lot of xylophone. Uh, Mumbo's Mountain, Treasure Trove Cove, Clanker's Cavern, 
Freezy Peak. <laughs> That's a lot of Z's in there. <laughs> uh, Gobi's Valley, Cl mm -hmm. Clock Wood, and uh, The Final Battle and The Banjo Overture. Those are nice. like the standouts on the album. Now, here's a question for the audience. What do you think the f total runtime of the album was? Mm. Rack your brains, rack your brains, do some Googling. Don't Google. That's <laughs> cheating. You can't cheat. If you get this right, you win ten thousand yeah. dollars. You win one million dollars. <laughs> one million dollars. I will go into a ton of debt if you get this correctly. I will rack up double my student debt. <laughs> double. Seventeen tracks. Mm -hmm. Eight minutes. <laughs> Any other guesses? Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Eight. Twenty-eight. You're. You got to go a little higher than that. Last. 74, you're close, but mm. price of right rules means you're over. <laughs> Last call for your million dollars. Last, Last call, call for, for your million dollars. <laughs> 69 minutes, nice. And how many seconds? Four, 69, 69, <laughs> 69, you're correct, 69 you're correct. minutes and 420 seconds. You win a million seconds. dollars now. <laughs> yeah. uh, the total runtime on the disc was 69.09, <laughs> uh, which I thought that was a fun little fact. Yeah, that is a fun fact. Uh, so reception for the game, uh, because there wasn't a lot on the soundtrack, honestly, no. uh, but reception for the game, Metacritic, it sits at a 92%. Nice. Usually we do a reception and we break down like critics' analysis of yeah. albums, but there's not much for that. So I added one mm -hmm. that was from fangamer.com, mm -hmm. and Manuel C. <laughs> gave the soundtrack five stars and said, Banger alert! This is without a doubt my favorite work of mm -hmm. art I've ever had the pleasure of listening to. Grant Kirkhope really did his damned thing on this for sure. Eternally grateful to Fangamer for bringing this back. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. If you go on YouTube too, the comment section is quite funny underneath the soundtrack. Like people are just like worshiping Grant Kirkhope. It's like <laughs> I listen to this every morning. Grant's the best. Like it's like a whole like yeah. Give it a. Give, I was reading it this morning. Maybe that would explain why he did not respond to our emails. Yeah, it's true. We we emailed him <laughs> several times. Yeah. And and Instagrammed, and we were like, we just want to do you justice for the, the slap mm. in the face that you got from, from the Super Mario movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two guys from Calgary are going bring, Cal bring you the justice you deserve. Well, here's the thing <laughs> that you might not know, and this is why the room has a few seats in it. We are actually the number one English-speaking music history podcast in Chile. So, <laughs> a round of applause for that. Come yeah. on, that's free. How, how you may ask? How you may ask? VPN. VPN. Yeah, VPN. <laughs> We're also climbing up on the charts in Saudi Arabia, yes. and I don't know why. Yeah, the, the cultural crossover. I'm not sure exactly what's going on there, but we're 38th right now in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Um, so you guys are ahead of the game. In we'll Canada, the we're doing so well, we're off the charts. <laughs> we'll be the best new breakout <laughs> podcasters in 20 years from now. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get an award. Yeah, we'll win for best new podcast at the Canadian Podcast <laughs> Awards in, in like, 15 years. Yeah. Q 2040. We're coming 2040, on. we're, we're coming. coming on. We're coming on the scene. We're coming on the yeah. scene. Okay. Uh, so every episode, we usually break it down at the end with a rating. Mm -hmm. uh, we rate the album out of 10. Now, this is going to be interesting because uh, there's a few things that are, that are different with this. Uh, one, one of our categories is lyrics, and there are none. Yeah. Uh, there's no tens. spoken words. Uh, tens. tens. Uh, so we rate on technical, musical, lyrics, album art, reception, and does it hold up? Mm -hmm. Now, technically, it's mixed very well. Yes. Uh, and especially because it was, you know, he was basically playing all of the instruments himself, mm. apart from a few session musicians. Uh, so he's he's playing it and then mixing it himself, which is pretty impressive. Mm. So I would probably give him an eight and a half out of ten. Yeah, I just have to comment. I feel weird like rating this soundtrack when we've done like legendary, uh, like you know, pop pop culture iconic albums throughout history. This one's gonna come in. I like. I feel like at a really high level, it's yeah. gonna be like you know, Thriller, <laughs> <laughs> Born in the USA. We gave Born in the USA a seven out of ten, yeah. and that was our very first episode, and we've had to adjust everything <laughs> because of that. Yeah, everything's been like, you know, fives and sixes. We kind of shot ourselves in the foot. We off, shot ourselves off. in the foot just yeah, a little bit. One with of the that best one. albums of the 80s, we gave it a nice seven. So since then, we've been trying to even the ratings out. Um, anyways, you were saying you were technical? Uh, yes, yeah, so technical, I would say eight and a half out of ten. Eight and a half. Eight and a half out of ten. 
I'm gonna go seven and a half. Seven and a half. Just to be controversial. Just to be oh, that is very controversial. <laughs> so we're sitting at an eight right yes. now. Okay. Musical. Mm. I would go very high. Yeah, it's quite enjoyable. Uh, I would yeah. say probably nine out of ten. It made me feel like nostalgic for when I had no bills to pay. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Playing it last simple. night made me very happy. Yeah, life used to be so simple. And and <laughs> you know, like when you when when something triggers that part in your brain that makes you feel nostalgic. Yeah. And and forget about your problems. But then you get sad after. <laughs> then you get sad yeah. after. Yeah, but like, yeah. not, I mean, there's mm. only so much sad you can mm. be. I'm going to go eight. Eight? Yeah. All right, so we're at an eight and a, uh, 8.25 <laughs> right now. Test your math. Okay, <laughs> lyrics, zero. <laughs> <laughs> can we just wipe the category? Can we we just have wipe, to wipe the category. The category. <laughs> that one, uh, yeah. Album art, though, we're going to look at the uh, game art for mm. this, and I I would say that uh, it's it's I like it's iconic. It makes me remember being five years old, mm. opening that Nintendo box mm. for the first time, and my dad being like, "Are you excited?" <laughs> and I was like, "What is it? Are you excited?" And he's me like, and "Your mom are getting divorced." <laughs> <laughs> How that excited actually, are you? That did excite me. I'm <laughs> yeah. not gonna lie. They were good. not a good couple. Good. That I'm was glad. very much needed. Yeah, I'm glad. Um, but uh, I would say the album art, I mean, it, it features uh, Banjo running on the ground with Kazooie mm -hmm. like out of his backpack yes. and uh, Banjo's reaching for a puzzle piece. Uh, Grunty's in the background, all scary. Mm -hmm. uh, Mumbo's there. You know, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, I would, I would probably give it an eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. I'd 10? go, I'd go a solid eight out of ten. I'm gonna I, agree with you, just I, because you, you brought me into your childhood. I brought you into my. Ch yeah. You want to go further in? No. I could hit you. I okay. Don't. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, <no>. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> reception. <laughs> <laughs> uh, reception for the album so uh uh it is uh, uh across the board on metacritic i mean yeah. they gave the game a 92 <laughs> Man manuel c loved it too manuel c yeah. really loved it yeah and because of that i would have to say we're going with a nine out of ten <laughs> nine out of ten he bumped it up and yeah. i was gonna i was gonna go eight but manuel mm. really went into it uh Okay, and does it hold up? I think so. I, I mean, think so. It was fun to listen to and fun to revisit the game as well. I um, really enjoyed replaying the game. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I only played the first two levels, mm -hmm. but uh, but I enjoyed that, and uh, and and I think I'm going to continue playing it now. Yeah, I think the game certainly holds up too. The just, game definitely yeah. does. I think I think rejiggied is a better like listen, mm -hmm. like in terms of like an album, because like the original soundtrack, it's not bad, but it does have that like you can uh, you know uh, you can kind of hear the the a little bit of uh, of the uh, sixty four bit <laughs> yes. processing yes. in it, if that makes sense. I like the rejiggy as well. I thought the re it the just re sounds so epic. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it was. It was and the better. banjo is so crisp mm -hmm. in that album too. <laughs> 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 okay, so out of ten, mm -hmm. we're giving it an eight. Nice. <laughs> That's right up there. <laughs> That's right up there. Yeah, perfect. All right, so that beats out Bruce Springsteen. Yes. <laughs> the boss. Yeah. This yeah. soundtrack is better than Born in the USA. But that's what you get for having $1,500 tickets for your concert. That's so true. And Karma and comes around. Karma comes around. You got to watch what you do. And you know what? Uh, Grant Kirkhope made a lot of money off of this. Yeah. He made $1.5 million. <laughs> wow. Probably more. <laughs> Probably more. Mm, nice. And adjusted for inflation. Yeah, it's good to know. He was able to get out of the slums of Edinburgh and go to Scot from Scotland to go to California. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, which does seem like a little bit of a step sideways. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's pretty, pretty, pretty even, yeah, pretty lateral move. And I bet he's in a really nice part of California too. Yeah, probably. I forget. I don't think it said where he was. No, we should it, track him down. Uh, yeah, maybe he'll answer our emails if we show up to his <laughs> if house. If we show up at his yeah. house, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Huh? If we show up with a bag too, that'll help. Yeah. <laughs> it's grand. That won't look at all scary. No, no. <laughs> Get Tams and the tech man to come masked up again. Yeah. Yeah, there's it, the muscle back there. If, look at if you're wondering why <laughs> our producer is wearing a mask, it is because he is never going to show his face to anyone. Yeah. Ever. He's a secretive man. You are seeing him more than our <laughs> regular audience would, mm -hmm. ever. Mm hmm. Well, well, that is uh, that is the music of Banjo Kazooie. Yeah, it's music this is, Banjo Kazooie. This is Misfits on Vinyl. Thank yeah, you so much for coming, for coming guys. This has been fun. Uh, before we before we wrap it up, does anyone have any questions or mm -hmm. anything? We concerns. You guys want to beat us up? <laughs> I'll fight you. <ya. laughs> Anybody want to scrap right at him? Yeah. <laughs> mm. Ooh, I mean, I would have to say, like, even though he didn't do it solo, 
it's a tie between this and Goldeneye because I have just mm. as many good memories of Goldeneye. <laughs> I was telling the guys earlier, I had a memory of like playing Goldeneye with my dad mm. and getting really frustrated. So he gave me a timeout <laughs> and then he just made me sit on the couch while he went and killed my <laughs> character that was just sitting there. And he's like, oh, look, I killed you again, Junior. <laughs> and that was a really vivid memory that came bonding. back to Bonding. Bonding. <laughs> James Bonding. Uh, okay. For, um, me, for me, it's strictly the DK rap. That's my favorite. Yeah, yeah, DK Raps. Is that's good the one. one that brings me back to my childhood the most. And yeah. you know what? We got to give him the 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 boost on that right yeah. now. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's really feeling boost. down. Give him the big boost. Give him the big yeah. boost. Uh, any other? Yes. Mm. Who's your favorite member of the DK crew? Mm. Ooh, I like Diddy Kong. I kind of just go OG. I like Donkey Kong. Mm. Mm. I like Donkey Kong. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I, I like Donkey Kong. Nice. I hated the parts in like uh, in, in Donkey Kong Country when you had to switch. Really? Yeah. That was my favorite part. I wasn't a fan of it. No. I like I liked just rolling through everything. I'm a Diddy Kong guy through and through. That's fair. Yeah. We, uh, we used to, when we lived in Toronto together, we used mm. to play Super Mario Kart on the uh, Super Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, Donkey Kong was uh, always the bane of our existence. <laughs> yeah. As we would not play <laughs> as him, I was but told. he would beat us every single time. Yeah, we'd, we'd team up to get back at him. Yeah. yeah. I was always towed. We had to team mm. up to 100% the game. Yeah. Because we could not, like, it, it, like the game was so rubber banded. Well, it could also have been the varying levels of <laughs> intoxicated we were when we were playing it. That is uh, true. That probably also, <laughs> so, yeah, driving, <laughs> driving in Mario Kart is harder when you're intoxicated believe it or not <laughs> with or lettuce not. with lettuce <laughs> yes <laughs> of the electric variety of the electric yeah. variety <laughs> okay uh do we got any other questions yeah this is the mm, the best the of all best time. of all time mm, <laughs> this is the only one we've done this is the only uh, one we've done i don't know i, I don't think okay. so I, I would say like we gotta we gotta also if we're looking at soundtracks in general we have to look at Vice City and San Andreas mm-hmm. of the Grand Theft Auto universe because <laughs> yeah, like like back. honestly <laughs> those two soundtracks had had introduced me to so many artists that I love now yeah. specifically Vice City like I'm a huge 80s music nerd and like cruising around listening to V Rock as like an <laughs> eight year old was just so cool yeah uh, that was that was also really fun you graduated from Banjo Kazooie to, to GTA. Yeah, I had a troubled yeah. childhood. Yeah. Aaron. I think I we've like, discovered that. I feel like today. we should <laughs> misfits on daddy issues. On daddy. That's gonna be our, our new <laughs> podcast coming out. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have misfits on comics, misfits on daddy issues. Yeah. Um, which you do not have. I watched Aaron and his father build a cabinet one time. Yeah. It was really beautiful. It was a bonding experience. <laughs> and like the sun was setting. We didn't have any lights on. And his dad was like, Can you hand me that? And he's like, Sure, dad. And he hands it yeah. to him. And I was like, Aw, I'm watching the this. The powers of positive communication. I was like, huh. Yeah. Must be nice. <laughs> you just like stewing in your room. I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> I, so I, I watched it for <laughs> about 30 seconds. And then I was like, I don't need to interrupt this my, moment. My, da- my dad would come to visit. He'd buy groceries for the both of us. Yeah. It's very wholesome. Yeah. It was very wholesome. Yeah. I lived on a diet of pizza pops and cigarettes. That's when I lived in Toronto. <laughs> yeah. It was a, a good, solid yeah, diet. Look where we are now. Now we're, now we're here. <laughs> yeah. And I'm honestly very happy about mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Well. Uh, any other questions before we wrap it up? We actually did this one really quick. This yeah. was the quickest episode we've ever done. <laughs> we had the, the, if you have a coffee here, it's like the strongest freaking coffee I've ever had. <laughs> yeah. I took it and I was like buzzing. Sam was buzzing. Spencer wasn't feeling I, it. My coffee intake uh, is pretty high on a daily like, I was feeling it in my eyes. That's how caffeinated I was. Yeah, just like a regular, you know, coffee from the concession stand. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it was surprisingly strong. Mm-hmm. It made mm-hmm. me feel something. Are we only at 32 minutes? We're That's only at 32 wow. minutes. Wow. Um, any other any other thoughts, concerns? Anybody? Anybody? Uh, any, anybody? No, Bueller? Good. Bueller? That's good. Bueller? Bueller? Mm. What's your favorite episode? Mm. Ooh. 
I, uh, recently we had a comedian on from Lethbridge. It was quite fun. This was my least favorite. Yeah, episode. we this. bullied Spencer the whole time. The, the Faris Haitia. Uh, it was it was two hours of me just <laughs> taking abuse from two of my best friends. Yeah, we did. And that was Mad City. very painful. Yeah, it was uh, quite funny. Especially because I am not smart enough to respond <laughs> quick enough to two people <laughs> fighting me. Uh, so that that sucked. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we definitely bullied Spencer. I had to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I did feel bad, um, but but it, you know what? Good content, though. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm okay with being the stuttering John once in a while. Yeah, it's good, okay as good. long as as long as it's balanced. That was a recent favorite. I don't know what's the other great ones we've had that we really enjoyed. Uh, a great big pile of leaves would be one of that my favorites. That was cool. We got to interview the band. Yeah, that was fun. My my favorite band of all time, and I did not realize that they would actually get back to me when I reached out to them, and they were like, "Yeah, we're down," uh, but we couldn't record like with them uh, at the time. Like they were their their schedule wasn't working, so we just sent them the list of questions and they video answered them, and then we beforehand video answered <laughs> our responses to their questions. So we're like, "Wow, I can't believe you guys met at a dilly in Italy. That's crazy!" Like yeah, at a dilly in Italy. Dilly in Italy. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed. I was trying to think of the one. I, I kind of blanked actually. Um, I liked when we do the albums I like. So those are my favorite <laughs> episodes. Uh, I like when <laughs> I can relate to it. Yeah, those are the ones when, we, when I pick the albums. Those ones are my favorite. Yeah, I, I, I like I like those ones because I learn about new music. Yeah, Aaron is into a lot of uh, 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 different music than I am. <laughs> yes. Uh, like, we have very different musical mm -hmm. tastes. We cross over with 80s and alt. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's a lot of in between where we're just like, I don't know. But that is, I guess, the best part of the podcast. I joke. I do like listening to my albums. But listening to the stuff that Spencer likes, sometimes I really like it. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes he really <laughs> likes the stuff I do. Uh, sometimes he does not. So it's nice to have somebody to bounce that off of and talk about it. He said that CKY sucked and I'm still holding him yeah, I didn't like about that. That, that nah. hurts my soul. <laughs> I, I can't believe it. Yeah, not a fan. Yeah, but we will eventually review Aaron's favorite rapper, Takashi69. <laughs> yeah, and when we my do, favorite, yeah. I, will, I will be very brutal. No, no I, I want to get you in a little Uzi vert. That's the next, <laughs> that's the next progression here. <laughs> little Uzi's next. I prefer Glock Horizontal. Mm. <laughs> I felt racist. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, any more um, questions? Uh, uh, I, I guess one thing we could bring up, yeah. because this is a, a, a new audience and, and we haven't exposed them to this yet. If you haven't yet, you have to watch the movie Little Italy. Oh, yes. Hay Hayden, Christian Hayden Christensen's here. And um, we were going to go get a picture with Hayden Christensen as like cosplaying as his characters mm -hmm. from Little Italy. Uh, because we thought that would be great. It's uh, it's a, a, a rom com. Yeah, it's heavy on the rom. <laughs> yeah, uh, low on the com. Low on the com. Yeah, <laughs> it's high on the com for the wrong reasons. Let's put it like that. Yeah, and the rom isn't the, the rom isn't that good either. No, uh, picture zero chemistry Hayden Christensen with zero chemistry Emma Roberts. Yes. Yeah. And then for some reason Andrew Fung is Italian. Yes. <laughs> it's a really good watch. I fully recommend it. Um, and then he has a reveal halfway through where he's like, guys, I'm not really Italian. <laughs> <laughs> That's his big character arc. That's his arc. big character yeah. arc. It makes no sense. Yeah. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a great one. So if you meet Hayden Christensen, say that you love Little Italy. Yeah, if you spend the $400 to meet Hayden Christensen, <laughs> make sure you uh, remind him of that movie he did. I, that was really good. I was yeah. tempted to do that today, but then I... I Blew my budget on Lou Ferrigno, yeah. so that yeah. that did not help me. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a very disappointing moment in mm -hmm. my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> he gave me the cold shoulder. It was yeah, very sad. Spencer got snubbed by the Hulk. Uh, mm -hmm. I got yeah. The Hulk did not like me. He didn't even say hi to me <laughs> or anything. <laughs> he gave him the cash, and the Hulk just took a picture and walked away. And, and like yeah. Aaron was standing beside me <laughs> yeah. when I handed him the cash, so I thought it was like pretty obvious we'd be getting it together. And then he was like, "One only," and that was the only thing he said to me. <laughs> so I just have a picture with Lou Ferrigno <laughs> looking kind of displeased, yeah. and me like faking a smile. And then the, se the second after, I was like, "Was it worth it?" And Spencer was like, "No, it's <laughs> worth it at all." <laughs> while we were walking away. <laughs> 
<laughs> but you know what? We have a story now. Yeah, we sure do. And and if you listen to our next episode of the podcast, <laughs> we'll go even deeper into yeah. it. So check us out. Uh, yeah, check us out on wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, we're everywhere. We're on Instagram, too. We're Misfits on Vinyl Podcast. We got a Gmail as well. Yep, we got a TikTok as well. We got a TikTok. Um, uh, I believe the Gmail is Misfits on Vinyl Podcast at gmail.com. Nice. Yeah, we get all of our hate mail there. Yeah. So you send it our way. Uh, we also take album requests through the email or through Instagram. You can DM us. We like to do albums that the audience is asking for. So um, that also expands our horizons as well. Yeah. We want to have our musical knowledge base. <laughs> yes. Growing. Yes. Deepening. I yes. lost my words. That's I'm trying okay. to think of words that mean bigger. That's okay. Expanding. Nice. We want to expand on our musical <laughs> let's, knowledge. Let's fill the rest of this time with adjectives. <laughs> Go for uh, it. D- d- larger. <laughs> nice. more <laughs> Yeah, that works. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, guys. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks thank you so out. much. <laughs> Man, yeah, we rifled through that. That was crazy. Yeah, I was know. not expecting it to go that fast. Yeah, thank you so much for coming out, everyone. Thank you for listening to this episode of Misfits on Vinyl, hosted by Spencer Streichert and me, Aaron Walsh, and of course produced by Sam Sam the Tech Man, Sam Lindsay. If you like us, please rate us, subscribe to us, share us. Our socials are Misfits on Vinyl Podcast on Instagram and TikTok. If you want to send us an email with any suggestions or criticisms, uh, we love that shit, so send it away. It's Misfits on Vinyl at gmail.com. We love you guys. Thank you.